The gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Kamick, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for appearing before us here today. I've heard your last name pronounced a couple of different ways today. How, do, how is it properly pronounced? Seligman. Thank you very much. Seligman? Seligman. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Seligman. You stated you are an expert in constitutional law, correct? Yes. Okay. Excellent. In your testimony, your written testimony, which was provided to us late last night, uh, it says that, quote, and this is your writing, no government official ever threatened any social media platform with adverse action if a platform declined to moderate content flagged by the official or if a platform decided not to take an official's suggestions. Do you stand by your testimony? Yes. Okay. Now, a few minutes ago, just prior, you said that members of the legislative branch don't qualify for this particular statement, despite the fact that you said no government official ever. Does a representative in Congress constitute a government official? Well, let me clarify uh, my do. testimony uh, from earlier. I don't think that legislative proposals that were brought by Republicans or Democrats constitute uh, threats against social media platforms. Uh, that's true whether with respect to Section 230 reform. It's sure. true with respect to antitrust enforcement. So that would then lead us to the natural inclination to believe that you're talking about the executive branch, correct? Uh, At being government officials. So government officials like the deputy assistant to the president and director of digital strategy like Robert Flattery or the White House senior advisor like Andrew Slavitt or the NSC staffer Katie Colas or the deputy assistant to the president or the White House digital director or the press secretary for the first lady or the NSC director for counterterrorism, the chief of staff for the Office of Digital Strategy, the director of strategic communication and engagement, the White House associate counsel, associate director for communications, the deputy director of digital strategy and the strategic director of digital communications. Those are government officials, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, and what's so interesting is that all of these members of the executive branch, all of them, have communications, thousands of emails between them and Twitter and Meta officials where they demand that posts be taken down and censored. I'll give you a couple of, of examples, and then we'll see if you, you still feel so strongly about your words. January 23rd, three days after the inauguration, at 1.04 a.m., Clark Humphrey of the White House emails Twitter and says, we're flagging this post for you. Hey folks, wanted to flag this tweet, wondering if we can get moving on the process to have it taken down, dot, 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 ASAP. Then, on February 7th, an email exchange took place between Twitter and White House Deputy Assistant to the President and Director of Digital Strategy, Rob Flattery, and asked for the steps that he could take to, quote, streamline the process for the White House's demands for Twitter censorship. Then two days later, on February 9th, 2021, he follows up again with Facebook with a more aggressive demand for more information, along with an accusation that would be repeated many times in the future, that Facebook was failing to censor speech, uh, to censor speech on its platform, and it was causing, quote, political violence. Fast forward, you have March 15th, White House senior advisor then made an om om ominous statement threatening unspecified executive action against Facebook in retaliation for Facebook's perceived lack of cooperation with the White House's list of demands that have been documented and will be inserted into the record for this hearing on censorship of, quote, borderline content. The line that I think is particularly troubling is saying, Internally, we have been considering our options on what to do about it. Do you consider that to be non-threatening? I'm not familiar with the particular documents that you're referring to. I just um, read you multiple examples. Yes, and so I don't think that emphatic expressions of the concern, their concerns about the problem of misinformation is a threat. I don't. So when President Biden says that social media companies are killing people and then there is a direct line from the White House to the social media companies demanding posts be removed, going so far as to say there has to be a quick and devastating takedown, a published takedown, that is not a threat? I don't believe so. Wow. I also don't believe it wow. was a threat when President I, Trump I am, made comments about uh, social media. I am so media glad we have this on the record. Um, again, my apologies to you, sir, for what you've had to endure here today. But with that, I yield back.